this. I <laughs> just wanted to share some of it. Uh, um, I have not prepared mentally, but uh, the idea was to share some of the challenges that we faced uh, right along the journey from when we started out to uh, multiple stages of growth that we had. Uh, she, she felt that it is good to share that uh, more than what I shared uh, in the presentation. So, uh, we started out at uh, end of 2001. Uh, uh, all the co-founders, uh, four of us were working together in another automotive product design firm. So we had a good working relationship with among four of us and also a good understanding of what each other's strengths uh, are in terms of uh, what part of the business each one of us could handle. Uh, we had uh, a good solid business plan. We had uh, a VC who uh, we had lined up and there was roughly in the 2 million bow part that he was willing to commit. Uh, then 9 happened and the whole ecosystem went completely shut. Uh, so we we had almost, not almost, we had come out of our uh, salary jobs and uh, we had already started looking and communicating to our customers that this is possible and uh, we have set up this shop which also meant that we had invested in an office space out of our pocket. Uh, thinking that VC money is going to come and uh, later it would, uh, we would probably would have looked at a smaller office space if we, uh, at the right of the bat, if we had known it's our own money that we are spending. So that's the learning for us. And it was bootstrap journey for the first three years. So which meant that uh, the project money is what is going to uh, bring in the subsequent growth. And uh, which also meant that uh, there were no salaries for most of us uh, for the first six months and the graded increase in salary based on the uh, consulting work that we are doing. Uh, since we are from the automotive uh, area and a lot of customers that we had were automotive because we knew them and we also uh, knew that or they knew that what we are capable of. So slowly we started to look at uh, that area as a, a weakness for us in the sense that uh, uh, the sales cycles were really long, uh, which meant that you approach a customer, uh, it takes about three, four, five months sometimes to convert that into a project. Reason being, those are the large size projects and customers also take that long to, uh, that, that much of time to decide on a program. Uh, company our size, that point in time, it was very hard to sustain that kind of thing. So we looked at other areas where we can bring our design and engineering capabilities uh, to other verticals. That's when we looked at diversifying into uh, product companies where uh, healthcare or you're looking at uh, white goods manufacturing or uh, FMCG. Uh, slowly in the next three, four years, uh, FMCG became our uh, forte, if you will. I mean, we started to work. We sensed that it's an underserved uh, vertical where uh, the big players were not playing in that area. And uh, a lot of the R&D spends that they were doing were in the core chemistry of their products. But where we came in is the engineering of the overall delivery. Uh, when I say engineering, I also mean the design and uh, taking it forward. So, our consumer insights, uh, creative design, the engineering, all of that came into play which we were very strong in the automotive area had to be uh, deployed in, uh, in the FMCG area where they were not doing it. So, it meant that we had a, a good head start. Uh, it also meant that there was a period of uh, uh, I mean, educating the customer, trying to win them over and get those kind of businesses. Through that journey, we learned that a lot of our own uh, knowledge and IP could be monetized, which is what the journey I shared previously. And uh, I do talk about it at a very high level, but on the ground, the realities are, uh, one, people are very hard to get to get the right mindset and the right uh, skill set is very important. 
and uh, you need not have armies of people trying to do your product. You need one or two uh, really dedicated who understand both sides of things. When I say both sides of things, you will get people who are very strong in software tools and technologies, but will not be empathetic towards what the customer requirements are. Uh, and those are customers who cannot articulate the real needs. I mean, uh, many a times unless you put a prototype uh, interface in front of him or her, it's hard for them to comprehend what they need. So uh, that's the challenge th that we really face to get the people with the right skill set to enable that process. So that's been one, uh, I mean, it's a needle in a haystack kind of scenario to find that right <coughs> kind of uh, people with the skill set and mindset. Uh, of course, money is definitely a, a big player. Uh, what we had to do is, is to subsidize some of our consulting money into uh, funding our R&D, uh, which is very hard because uh, even the consulting business, uh, the reality is uh, at the end of 12 months, you have to give heights to people who have performed well. Uh, if you are chewing away money from that and you are not having uh, money to pay the hikes, uh, it, it will demotivate people who are actually winning your bread and butter. Even though you are thinking that I will get you ice cream and other things. Your uh, bottom line has to be, uh, your bread and butter has to be protected and has to be nurtured as well. So the dichotomy of having to run that consulting uh, with uh, people in a particular way and to build products is very hard. And it's also hard in terms of the mindset of people and being, getting them to mingle and perform as a single unit in a company is also harder because they think I am a products guy and I am some I am sitting on an ivory tower and I am delivering something which is different from what you are doing run of the mill. So those kind of uh, uh, people problems are also something that you have to uh, carefully tackle and uh, take the organization along. Those are some of the things that I wanted to I talk about. I think you were also uh, sharing with us about the you challenges know, initially when you said you were bootstrap for almost two, three years. Yes. <laughs> you were absolutely nothing to kind of. Correct, correct. So, because all the business plan that we had built when we started out was with some starting money to come in and that burning for a while while you are developing business sitting out of uh, North America or Europe. None of them. Uh, flu because there was no business in North America. There was actually no business in North America because once 9 11 happened, nobody believed that even though people who are outsourcing clamped down on getting new outsourcing contract. Even though we spent six months of our own money and parked in the US, none of them felt that design could be done in India. Even though they knew they were not willing to commit to doing design out of India. Now it is. Uh, they easily just pick up the phone and drop a contract over online needs. But those days it was, I'm talking 2002-2003 kind of uh, uh, timeline. So that, that was definitely hard. And all the projects that we had were domestic projects for the first 3-4 years. Uh, which meant that uh, you get a 10 lakh order, people expect 20 lakh amount of work. That is. Uh, the project to end itself is difficult. Once you end, he asks, I want one more improvement on this, one more freshening. It gets into a cycle where the real closure does not happen. So those are challenges that, that are real. I mean, uh, Indian customers are definitely hard to deal with. Thank you so much. Thank you.